This is the Moon Hopper by Philip at Games Art. He's given it me to give to you guys as part of the Severna Spaceport Kickstarter. And I thought it was only right that I made it up, printed it and showed you. If you really like this design, Philip also has an add-on with more ships, but more about that later. So I started the project with two piles of 3D prints. Yes, I'm doing it twice, but why twice? Well, first up on the left, We've got the standard 28mm STLs that came from Philip. I don't play at 28mm, but from the exterior when printed, these actually look fine. But if I want to make it playable and use the interior, because I play at 35mm, I need to be able to get my minis inside and play with them. So for me, I wanted a 35mm interior, but it makes it a bit bigger. But these are taxis, so I think one is like a personal taxi. From the outside, this is where I can just put, you know, a couple of people in. And then the other one looks like it's the party bus of bad taxis where you can get an entire herd of banthers in there. So there we go. Now, if it sounds complex to get from 28 mil to 35 mil, it really isn't. You take 35 mil, you divide it by 28 and you get 125% and you just change it in the slicer. Easy enough as long as you remember to change every part. It even works with the open lock clips, so it's not like you need to do anything differently about clipping it all together. But this print had a challenge that I don't normally come across, and a couple of my recent projects have had it. And I'm still learning how to print properly with supports. Now I do all my FDM support free because supports can mar the surface, so you have to do more finishing afterwards to get them to look good. Not always, but quite often. So for this shuttle, I had to use supports. This piece here is a really great example of that. There's no way you can print this well for orientation that doesn't require support. So to get them out, I do a lot of work with a blunt box cutter. Blunt because then it won't cut into my nice FDM print that I want left. And actually the supports just don't stick particularly to it. There's a slight gap between the support and the FDM print itself. So when you want to get them out, you can normally just lever them off or prise them off. The other tool I use a lot is a pair of small pliers to just grip them and tug. And for many of them, gripping and tugging is just enough. I think it really depends on the support, the prints, and which printer I'm on as to how easy the supports to clean up. And this is definitely the worst piece that I had. It took me quite a while, actually about 40 minutes to get the first one cleaned up, but I got faster as time went on. And all you have to do is literally get rid of the supports everywhere that they are. And you can help yourself by where you put placement of the supports in your slicer. I use Presser Slicer and I can paint on where I don't want supports or where I do want supports. So I would never support an area that could be bridged by just the print head extruding, going straight over the gap and not worrying about it sagging. So I only use supports on big gaps like this where you literally could not print in midair because it just wouldn't work. With the supports done, I decided to put everything together, it literally just clips, and spray it as a complete piece because I'm too lazy to do all the pieces individually. And I'm gonna use the roof to mask where I need to do inside and outside. So basically I started spraying the inside with Tamiya Fine Grey. I like this primer, it's got a slight gleam to it, it's not particularly matte, and it's great for an interior sort of satin look. I have chosen not to worry about the layer lines. Now the layer lines are 0.16, so they're not the finest you could do, you could go to 0.12, and they do show a little bit, especially on, say, some of the thinner areas around the windows at the front. But overall, they're not that visible, and I'm just going to paint as if they're not there. For the smaller pieces, I just stick them on with masking tape to a piece of card and spray them individually. These will just slot into the interior, but it's easier to take them out to paint. The roof is a separate piece. Now I could put some acetate or something in those gaps and I've actually got the 3D prints that go in them, but I might just leave them open and pretend that there's some kind of force field or something there. When I spray the yellow, I'm gonna put the roof on top, 
But if I'm not careful, the yellow will just go down through those holes in the roof and in the windshield and inside and cover up all that grey. So I masked those out using the 3D prints that are provided to, I don't know, just you can print them in clear or something or do a different colour, whatever you like to fill in this area. Having decided to leave it open, I could just slot these in and they acted as natural masks. Time to spray the main colour. Now I'm using filler primer from Halfords. It's a car spray, it's quite noxious, you might want to do it outside if you don't have a proper airbrush booth. What I like about it, it is a filler primer so it does fill the layer lines a little bit, but I like the colour, that's why I'm using it. It's a sludgy yellow, just what I imagine a taxi would be. Yellow, but not so bright, it's obnoxious. Now the yellow is quite matte, it's not meant to be a finished coat, and I want these to look glossier. I don't want them pure gloss, even though they're the equivalent of like a car or a vehicle, but I did want them to have a slight gleam to them. So I used a satin, which is halfway between matte and gloss, a satin spray, just an acrylic spray, to go over them to give them what I needed. If you want to get hold of your own Moonhopper, you can do it as part of my Severna Spaceport Kickstarter that's currently running. You'll also get all of these amazing models. So if you want to get hold of your own Moonhopper and a Spaceport to go with it, pop on over to Kickstarter and back now. There's a huge wealth of details on these models and I didn't want to lose that, I wanted to accentuate it. So I'm using speed paints. These are army painter equivalent of contrast paints. And when they go onto a base, in this case grey, but on the exterior yellow, they settle in a way that the highlight, the high bits, are left paler than the low lights, the dark bits. Now they're made for painting minis, but they work just as well for terrain if a somewhat expensive way if you've got huge amounts to do. Now I've never used grimdark black on anything, but as this isn't a pure black because it does dry with those highlights, I've been using it on all the areas I want to pick out. Now that's the interior seats, the exterior panels. I did have a large, a lot of thought about whether I wanted them to be black and I just started and then ended up doing them all. It's very easy to get carried away with this, but actually because I've done FDM and there are layer lines, the more I break up the panels of flat color, the less likely you are to spot those layer lines I didn't just do black though. This is a dark silver. I really like it. It's one of the new 2.0 speed paints and it works really well. I do have a little bit of the yellow showing through and I will eventually put a satin over this again so it won't look quite as gleamy. But it's nice to highlight some of the areas that you would expect to be metallic in a metallic. Any model that has loads of cracks, grooves, marks cut into the surface can really benefit from panel lining. And that's normally done with an enamel wash. This is actually Tamiya panel liner. I really like it because the bottle's square so it's hard to knock over and it comes with a really fine brush. And you just touch that brush into the lines and capillary action wicks it down and you get a beautifully lined, if somewhat splodged in places, effect. Now not to worry, we can get rid of those splodges once it's more or less dried up with just a cotton bud and some white spirit and they just wash straight back off again. We're nearly there, but I wasn't quite happy with how the engines were looking. You can see the one on the front of the shot. It's very plain and boring. I need to bring out those details. But when I put the gray on, it just wicks too much into things and doesn't look that good. So I decided to use something like the speed paint. This is Sangolum, a dark yellow, because it doesn't wick in the same way. So it's not gonna spread through all the layer lines and cause problems. I basically went over the whole of the engine and added this on. And when it dries, it's very subtle, but I liked the way it looked when it dried. It just made the yellow look deeper and made it pop. I ended up putting this color like a filter over all the areas. It just adds richness to the yellow without really changing the color or the tone of it at all. And it's not thick enough that it's gonna sit in the layer lines and draw attention to them. That's not what this is about. It's just about making the yellow pop. I painted in the final details like the taxi sign and I also used metallics just on some of the side details to make them pop. When they were dry, I took it outside and sprayed it with a satin varnish again, just a clear sealer. And then I put it all together 
and I was done. Now before we get to the final pictures and videos, this Moonhopper is actually part of the UPC range by Philip at GamesArt. The UPC is Universal Personal Carrier and he does a whole range of other craft in that and they're available as an add-on to the Saverna Spaceport Kickstarter. So if you're interested, go and check them out now. And here's the final result. Now before I say anything, first of a big thanks to Philip at GamesArt for not only giving me this model to share with you as part of the Saverna Spaceport Kickstarter, but also for producing an add-on of his other ships to go on it. Now I've printed this in both 28mm and 35mm and to be honest I like both sizes. If I want a playable interior to have that door open to be able to get in or even just to leave the roof off so that you can get in and out easily if you can jump, I probably would go with a 35mm because there's a playable interior. But the 28mm also has a lot going for it. It's a smaller presence on the table, it's more of a view blocker you can still stand on the roof, especially if you were to put the inserts in that I missed out. So there's definitely a lot going for both sizes, and I feel like you could even have both like I do. One is more of a bus, and one is more of an individual taxi. What's great about them is they're modular, so you can expand this, you can shrink it, you can add more engines, more chairs, whatever it is that you want. It's a great system, and it syncs in with the add-on extra ships, all of the modularity from those is compatible because they're all on the same open lock system. So they've been a fun little set of prints to do and I do recommend you checking them out. Thanks again to Philip. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Go check out my Spaceport Kickstarter. Links will be down below. I'll see you next time.